This is the last service of the year for 2020. We are coming to the end of this season and getting ready to enter a new season. Are you excited about entering a new season? Good to see Trish. You guys have a good trip? Good. Glad to have you back. Tomorrow is the last day of the year. Amen. And the thought occurred to me as I was trying to figure out what I wanted to talk about on this last service of the year, that as we approach the finish line, we should always endeavor to finish strong. Amen. And so that's the uh, title of the message tonight, is Finish Strong. So I want to look at a verse in the Bible, and I want to talk about a man who was getting ready to finish a season, and what he had to say about this. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Paul is writing to Timothy. He says, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. So Paul is writing this letter to Timothy, and Paul knows that he's about to die. He's, he's coming to the end of his journey. He's about to finish his season here on the earth. But he tells Timothy that he has fought all the way to the end. He kept the faith all the way to the end. He finished his race. And here we are 2,000 years later talking about it. What, uh, what an amazing person Paul was. What an influential person in the, in the early church that Paul was. He said, I kept the faith. Now, there would be no reason for Paul to mention the fact that he kept the faith unless there were opportunities for him to lose the faith. It's, it's not remarkable to say, well, I kept the faith if keeping the faith is easy. No, he's, he's saying, look, I, I kept the faith despite the fact that I had opportunities to lose the faith. Despite the fact that I had opportunities to let go of my faith. And... How do we know that Paul had opportunities to let go of his faith? We know that Paul had challenges in his ministry. In fact, he talks about it in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. He says this, From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Now, when we talk about Jesus bore stripes, he was beaten 39 times. That's what he's talking about here. That happened to Jesus. It happened to Paul five times. Five times he received 39 stripes. Now, just in case you weren't aware of this, the reason that people received 40 stripes minus one, they received 39, in ancient Jewish culture, it was considered torture if you beat somebody 40 times. So you can beat them 39, but you can't beat them 40. 39 is merciful, 40 is torture. Five times he received 39 stripes. Verse 25, three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. And that's not with marijuana. They, they threw rocks at him. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A day and a night I have been in the deep. He was floating out there in the ocean or the Mediterranean Sea. In journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, people that said they were my friend, people who said they were on my side, people who said that they believed the way that I believed, but they weren't. They were false. In weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, Paul had trouble sleeping. In hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. And besides the other things, what comes upon me daily? My deep concern for all the churches. And, and, and we see all these things that Paul went through, and we, 21st century Americans, we want to complain when the AC goes out. Or the hot water heater. 
or the water heater <laughs> or the dryer. <laughs> this guy faced real challenges. This guy was in peril often. Now, he lists all of these things, and I like how at the end of verse 28, the last thing that he lists here is his deep concern for all the churches. He equates his daily concern for the church as just as burdensome as shipwrecks and beatings. Isn't that remarkable? Wouldn't you love all Christians to have that kind of daily concern for the ministry? Paul had, <clears throat> excuse me, Paul had daily concern for the church, for the body of Christ, not just once or twice a week. Daily. He wanted to see the body of Christ reach its full potential. And it, so much so that it weighed on him. It was a burden that he carried. I want to see the body of Christ reach its potential. This constant concern that he had for the church caused him to run the race his entire life. To not slow down, to not stop, and to not coast across the finish line. He wanted to run hard, he wanted to run strong, and he wanted to finish strong. Amen? Amen. I can relate with this. Faith Life Worship Center is the first thing I think about every morning when I wake up. It's the last thing I think about when I go to sleep. I, I, I don't put church on Saturday and Wednesday. No, I have a daily concern for it. A, a daily concern for the health of this church and the growth of this church and the furthering of the kingdom through this church. And not just the church as an organization, I have a daily concern for every person in this room and everyone who couldn't be here tonight. For the people, I have a daily concern. I want to see us grow together in the things of God. I want to see us grow in our faith. I want to see us grow in our understanding of how the kingdom works. I want to see us grow in the moving and the power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Not just in church, but in our personal lives. Amen. Amen. Now, despite all of the challenges that Paul had, Despite all the beatings, despite all of the perils, despite living in a state of constant concern for the church, Paul never quit. Can you imagine living your entire life carrying a burden for something? And, 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 and that burden, not only, does it, not only does it not discourage you, but it causes you to, 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 to run harder. A lot of people face a burden and, and they just want to let go of it. They just want to quit. They want to give up. No, this burden that he had caused him to run harder, to run stronger. He never stopped. He ran the race his whole life. Folks, we need to be more like Paul. We need to be kingdom minded. We need to always be saying, okay, what's the next, what, what's the next task? What's the next challenge? What's the next opportunity? All right, I've crossed this finish line. What's my next race? What's the next thing that I have to do? What's the next thing that I get to do? A lot of people in our society today, they don't have this mentality. They work so they can stop working. They work so that they can earn a break. They make just enough money to pay their bills so that they don't have to work anymore. They work 40 hours a week and not a minute more so that they can stop working on the weekends. They work 50 weeks out of the year and not a day more so that they can stop working and go on vacation. They work until they're 65 and not a day after that because they want to stop working and they want to retire. But that's not kingdom-minded thinking. Kingdom-minded thinking doesn't say work until you have enough or work so that you can stop working. Kingdom-minded thinking says you work so that you can fulfill your kingdom purpose through the work. That's what kingdom-minded thinking is. I don't work to earn a paycheck. I, I work to fulfill a purpose. And my job is not my source. 
The blessing is my source. My job is my assignment. God is my source. Now God may use my job to channel income to me, that, that's fine. But don't look at your job as your source. Look at your job as your kingdom assignment, your kingdom purpose. That's the way Paul looked at it. Kingdom-minded thinking means that you don't stop thinking about work at 5 p.m. Paul had a daily concern about the state of the church. It constantly consumed his thoughts. To the point that he equated that burden in the same list of shipwrecks and beatings and perils and all sorts of other things. There have been a lot of times in the past several months, because I've had a really busy year in, in 2020, especially when we went into quarantine and we had to totally change gears on how we present the gospel to people because our physical doors were closed. There have been a lot of times over the past several months where I thought to myself, if I can just complete these eight tasks, I can be ahead of the curve and I can take a break. But the problem is, once I complete the fifth task, there's four more tasks that pop up. And the inflow of tasks never stops. Why? Because the kingdom is always moving forward. Amen. The kingdom is always on the increase. I don't want the tasks to stop. I don't want to have more purpose in the pipeline. I, I always want to be saying, what's the next thing that we can do for the body of Christ? Louise and I are going to be taking a vacation here in a few weeks <clears throat> to recharge our batteries. But, uh, you know, I told Louise the other day, we, we still haven't made up our mind wh where we're going to go. We, in fact, we may not go anywhere. We may just stay home and do nothing for a change. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't tell you guys. You just show up. <laughs> but I told Louise the other day when we were thinking about where we wanted to go, I said, you know, I'm still going to take my computer with me on vacation. Not because I'm consumed with work. But because if something inspires me, I want to be able to create in the moment and not have to say, well, as soon as I get home, I'll create that. If God inspires me to write a song or to write a message or to, or to come up with a new project or a new outreach or something that we want to do, I want to be able to create in that environment. In other words, I don't work so that I can earn a vacation. I don't work so that I can earn the right to stop working. I go on a vacation so that I can prepare myself for more work and for better work. It, the mentality at which we approach work and approach leisure, too many people in our society, they have it backwards. I work hard so that I can earn the right to not work. That's not the way that it works. It's you go on vacation so that you can be a better worker. So that you can recharge and, and refresh yourself and prepare yourself to, to prepare yourself for more increase. Amen. Now, keep all that in mind. I'm going to completely change gears here. People are often known by their failings and by their shortcomings. Which is one of the reasons that I believe we should all endeavor to finish strong. I want to be known by my successes. I want to be known by finishing the race at the top of my game. Amen? I don't want to be known for my failures. I'm going to name a few names here. <clears throat> and I want you to tell me, go ahead and say it out loud. What are the first things that pop into your head when I say these names? Okay? Okay. Here's the first one. Richard Nixon. Right? <laughs> Sherry's like, we were supposed to think good things. 
But one, one person said president, three people said Watergate. Why? Richard Nixon is known for Watergate. Jimmy Swagger. What, what's the first thing you think of when you think of Jimmy Swagger? You, you think of scandal. What about Jim Baker? Adultery, scandal. Bill Cosby. You, you think of a guy that tried to drug women and, I mean, but think about this for a minute. Richard Nixon was largely responsible for the U.S.'s de-escalation of Vietnam. He was the one who began pulling our troops back out. It finished under Gerald Ford, but he was the one who, who presided over that. Did you know that Nixon presided over the creation of the EPA? Did you know that Nixon presided over the creation of OSHA? Yeah. Most people don't know that. Nixon is forever attached to the Watergate scandal. Why? Because he didn't finish strong. Bill Cosby, <clears throat> tremendous comedian, had one of the most popular sitcoms in television history back in the 80s. Created Fat Albert. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> did all the voices for Fat Albert. But people know him for the scandal. Jimmy Swaggart and Jim Baker, two of the most influential ministers of the gospel for years. But their scandal has greatly hindered their ability to finish strong. Now, they're still doing things for the gospel. They're, they're still preaching. Jimmy Swaggart has his own television network. So they're still ministering to people, but they're, they, they are a shell of what they were at their peak. I've often said that Walt Disney is fortunate that he died when he did. Because at the time that he, was di that, that he died, he was trying to build a city in the Orlando area, which I believe if they had gone through with this project, it would have failed terribly, and that would have been the legacy that he left behind. He would have been forever attached to that failure. Walt Disney wanted to build a city in the shape of a wheel, and the hub of the wheel was going to be where all of the business and all the commerce and all the industry happened, and then the spokes of the wheel would be where all of the people lived in the community. But the entire city, the entire wheel, was going to be indoors. He was going to build a giant indoor city. I don't know about you, I have no interest in living in an indoor city. And I don't think anybody else would either. And he called the city the experimental prototype community of tomorrow. Epcot. So after he died, that project was quickly scrapped. Because I think everybody in the corporation knew this is never going to work. Nobody, nobody wants to live in an indoor city. So what they did was after he, after he died, they made an amusement park and they decided to name it after that project and that became Epcot Center. But what I'm saying here is Walt Disney died when he was at the top of his game. And that's why he's still respected and loved 55 years after he died. His ideologies are still very strong and very prevalent in his corporation and in his amusement parks. Why? Because people remember the good things that he did. If he would have started that project, I believe it would have failed tremendously and that would be the thing that he'd be known for. He finished strong. Folks, I don't want to be known for my failures. I want to be known for my successes. I want people to look back and say, that was a guy who accomplished some amazing things for the kingdom of God. Can you say amen to that? Amen. I also want to leave a lasting legacy. I don't want my legacy to fizzle out in six months. I, I, I know of a man who, uh, he was a multimillionaire. Uh, this man died eight years ago. And today, the corporation that he built no longer exists. This guy was a multimillionaire. In fact, I believe to this day, eight years after his death, he still doesn't have a headstone on his grave. 
because nobody cares. Nobody cares enough about him to put a headstone on his grave. He built an empire with one idea in mind, to fund his own lifestyle. He did not build a corporation so that he, he could improve other people's lives. He didn't want to make a difference in this world. He wasn't trying to further a cause. His cause was he wanted to drive nice cars, play golf, and party with his friends. Now he's dead, and everything that he built is gone. That's tragic. Three days ago, I received a message on Facebook from somebody that I don't even know who this person is. She reached out to me on Facebook, and I want, I want, I want to read you what, what she said to me. She said, I just want to let you know that I still sing the songs that you shared with Only Believe Ministries way back when. I cast my care upon you was something that got me through the COVID shutdown. My favorite t-shirt of all time was the one that I got that said, I don't care what the world may say, I'm going to praise him anyway. That shirt lasted for years. I always regretted not getting one more. Ed has one of those shirts. You have two of them? In case the first one wears out? One in Illinois, one in Florida. So this, this lady is referring to, there was a church, this was probably 18, 19 years ago at least, there was a church about two hours from where I lived in Ohio, and they asked me to go to their church every Monday night and work with their choir and teach their choir my songs, my, their, their praise and worship. Now, I, I already had a job as a worship leader at my church in my town in Columbus, Ohio. This church was about two, two hours outside of Ohio, or of Columbus. And I would go there every, every Monday night for about six months and I would teach them praise and worship music. And so here it is, 18, 19 years later, one of the ladies from that church reached out to me and said, a song that you wrote got me through COVID. That's the, that's the legacy I want to leave. I, I want people to be able to look back 10, 15, 20 years later and say, that guy did something that changed my life. I want to finish strong, amen? Now, Paul, in his letter to Timothy, he's talking about finishing the end of his life strong. But I don't believe we should just finish our life strong. I think we should finish everything strong. Yeah. Amen. Every project, every season, every year. Remember a few weeks ago when I was talking to you guys about uh, when I was nine years old, I, I did BMX racing? And I, I, I had a, a first place trophy, and then I have two second place trophies, and then I got that stupid fourth place yellow ribbon, and I don't display the yellow ribbon. I display my trophies. They're on display in my man cave. I don't even know where the yellow ribbon is. It's probably packed away in some tote someplace. Yeah, I'll bet you have it. <laughs> I was ashamed of that thing. <clears throat> But the reason that I earned the stupid fourth place yellow ribbon was that night during one of the heats, I was in first place. I rounded the last corner, the final corner. I was going on the final stretch towards the finish line. I had the race won, and I stopped pedaling. I decided to coast across the finish line. I was trying to be fancy. And I got passed by two guys right before I crossed the finish line. I ended up in third place on that heat. I ended up in fourth place for the night. Because after I had third place, it just it got in my mind. And then I couldn't, uh, I couldn't do well for the rest of the night. I didn't finish strong. Folks, we had a very productive year in 2020. Faith Life Worship Center did. But I, I'm going to say, I think our last two months were the busiest months of the entire year. Amen. <laughs> at the end of October, we had a ladies' fellowship at our house. The men were supposed to go golfing, but that fell through because the weather forecast said we were going to have severe thunderstorms. We had a spectacular second anniversary service. We had a very memorable uh, Veterans Day service. 
We had a motorcycle rally that was done in absolute excellence. I think we really represented the kingdom well that day. We had a fun uh, Thanksgiving fellowship, uh, potluck and game night. And I destroyed Sandy and Yahtzee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to brag until next Thanksgiving. We had an excellent Christmas service, and I thought the children did an awesome job with that. We had a very heartwarming candlelight and communion service. And then two weekends ago, we had the greatest wedding that I've ever experienced. <clears throat> you know, when we were at the reception after the wedding, I'm, I'm sitting there at our table, and I'm watching as several of our church members are walking around and making sure that things are decorated and things are taken care of. And it, you know, I, I'm watching people from our church fam, watching people from our church family go around, and and uh, th they're making sure that everything's taken care of. And I looked over at my mom, and feeling the way I am right now, I looked over at my mom and I had tears running down my cheek. And I just told my mom, I'm such a blessed man for the, the church family that we have here. We couldn't have pulled that wedding off without you guys. It, it, it was, I'm a blessed man. It was awesome. And then on top of everything else that we did for the last two months, Caleb and I managed to produce two months worth of TV broadcasts in about a week and a half. We signed a contract with a new TV network, which we're going to start broadcasting a week from yesterday. Yeah, yeah, next Tuesday. So we're going to be on CTN here in uh, Southwest Florida beginning next Tuesday. Uh, 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday nights and 2 p.m on Saturday afternoons. Um, Faith Broadcasting Network gave us another six months of free airtime. So we're gonna continue broadcasting on three continents for free. We definitely finished 2020 strong. Yes. Amen. Amen. And I'm also gonna say, there, there are parts of 2020, I am glad to have 2020 behind us. And I'm looking ahead to 2021. Amen. Because as I said at our anniversary banquet, uh, 2021 is our second banquet. Yes. It's, it's our do-over. It's our chance to go even further for the kingdom. We knew what we wanted to accomplish in 2020. We were ready to accomplish it. But circumstances got in the way. But no more. 2021, we're going, we're going forward. We're going we're gonna to do some great things for the, uh, for the kingdom in 2021. Now, Jesus also talked about finishing strong. And I want to show you something that Jesus said about this. Luke chapter 14, verse 27. Jesus says this. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. So Jesus is saying, do you want people to mock you because you started something and you weren't able to finish it? What legacy do you want to leave behind? How do you want people to remember you? Do, they, do you want people to remember, remember you as a person that can never finish anything? <clears throat> Jesus is talking about finishing and finishing strong. You know, the thought occurred to me. Jesus said things like, people will persecute you because of the word. Did he not say that? He said, you will be hated by all nations because of me. He said that, right? Yes. Blessed are you when people persecute you. Blessed are, uh, bl blessed are you when people mock you. Jesus talked about these things a lot. 
He's basically what Jesus said over and over and over again is when you follow me and when you stand for the kingdom and when you stand for God's way of doing things, you're going to be mocked. You're going to be persecuted. S Satan is going to try to interfere with the things that you want to do for the kingdom. People are going to combat you over these things. Jesus told us to expect it. And Jesus told us to, to not allow the, the persecution to derail us, to sideline us, right? So Jesus said this over and over again, that we should expect to be persecuted, that we should expect to be mocked because of the word and because of the kingdom and because we're following after him. But in this passage, he says, you don't want people to mock you. Isn't that interesting? In other words, Jesus is saying it's okay to be mocked for the cause of the kingdom. It's not okay to be mocked because you were not able to finish what you started. It's okay to be mocked and persecuted for the word's sake. It's not okay to be mocked because you didn't finish strong. That, that jumped out to me uh, this afternoon when I was meditating on this. And see, this is why I'm often mindful about starting something new in our church. I don't want to start something that we can't continue. I don't want to start something that we can't finish. I don't want to start something that we're going to have to cancel it because we couldn't handle it. I hate taking steps backwards. Because God's kingdom is always on the increase. God's kingdom doesn't back up. Amen? Amen. I don't like it when people say, hey, remember when we used to do this? That is so discouraging to me. It, it makes you sound like you're a has-been. I don't want to be a has-been. I want to be a am-being. <laughs> I want to be a am-doing, not a has-been. We had several guests that joined us for the uh, anniversary service. And how many remember the... Uh, the video that Louise and I made, the recap video for the year, where she punched me out and put me in the pool. <clears throat> but we, we played that video. It was 21 or 23 minutes long or something that kind of recapped all the things that we did over the past year. And these people, they came up to me after service. They said, man, we watched that video. You guys have been busy. I said, yeah, we have been busy. What did Jesus say to Mary when he was 12 years old? Don't you realize I have to be about my father's business? Yeah, we're busy because we're about our father's business. We're about the business of the kingdom. Well, we're going to talk more about this uh, on Saturday. Uh, I want to talk about the vision for 2021. I don't know if I'm going to get through all of it on Saturday or not because uh, there's some things that I believe God wants me to, to communicate to us and to, to teach us about the vision. But we're going to talk about vision next Saturday. Um, in mid-January, Louise and I are going to take two weeks off to uh, recharge our batteries. And then after that, fasten your seatbelts. Because 2021 is going to be an awesome year. You want to know why it's important to finish a season strong? It's so that you can start the next season strong. People tend to enter the next thing in the same manner that they exited the previous thing. Now, that's not just a year. That's anything. That could be a job. That could be a relationship. That could be a church. That could be a project. That could be a new season in your life. If, if you're in a relationship with somebody and you end that relationship in a bunch of dysfunction and emotional turmoil, well, how do you think you're going to enter into your next relationship? You're going to enter the next relationship with a bunch of dysfunction and emotional turmoil and baggage that you carried from the previous relationship. I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen people leave churches in a really dysfunctional, disorderly manner, and then they go to the next church and they bring that same dysfunction and disorder to that church. You know, our church isn't very old. We're two years old. But we're old enough that we've had people leave the church. And in the time that we've had people leave the church, some people 
are respectful and they'll call me or they'll send me an email or they'll talk to me in person or they'll send me a text message and then some people just take off and I, I didn't even know they left the church. I'm just going to tell everyone and everyone who's listening on, on, uh, online, if you're going to leave a church, have the common decency to tell your pastor that you left. You know? This church isn't for everybody. No church is. Every church has its niche in the body of Christ. And if, and if you're not getting fed here or if, if this just isn't the vision that you want to follow, that's fine. But tell me, <laughs> you know, have, have, have some decency. Because look, the way that you exit something is going to affect the way you enter the next thing. The way that we exit 2020 will affect the way we enter 2021. I want to finish strong because I want to start strong. Amen. Amen? I once heard a quote that said this, Start strong, stay strong, and finish strong by always remembering why you're doing it in the first place. We need to know why we're doing what we're doing. And I'll just tell you, we do what we do because we want to further the cause of the kingdom of God. I want to reach Southwest Florida with the gospel. I want to encourage people's faith. I want people to grow in their understanding of how the kingdom works. I want to see good, strong, healthy marriages and good, strong, healthy families and good, strong, healthy people, healthy bodies, healthy finances, healthy businesses. I want to see people succeed. Amen. Amen? And I need other people on board to help me move this thing along to push the vision of this church start strong stay strong finish strong by remember by remembering why you're doing it in the first place why do we want to finish 2020 strong so we can start 2021 strong and why do we want to start 2021 strong because we got kingdom business to accomplish amen i heard another quote and i really like this it said this the finish line is the beginning of a whole new race isn't that good? Yes. You know, most of you know I'm, I'm a NASCAR fan. I've been to several NASCAR races. You know, they have a line that they draw on the track. What's that line called? The finish line. The finish line. She, she said it. What's it called? The start finish line. That's what they call it. It's called the start finish line. It's the race where they start the race, and it's also, it's, a, it's the line where they start the race, and it's also the line where they finish the race. It's the line where they finish a lap and start a new lap. They call it the start-finish line. We're about to come to the start-finish line here in a couple of nights. We are finishing 2020. We are starting 2021. And 2021 is going to be an awesome year. Amen. All right? Are you with me? 2021 is going to be an awesome year. You're in the house. Throw your hands in the air and say this. Say, Lord, I thank you for a strong finish so that I can have a strong start. 2021 is my second banquet. I pray for this new season, a season of blessing. A season of empowerment. A season of, empowerment. A season of promotion. A season of, promotion. A season of, increase. A season of increase. The old season is closing. The new season is beginning. The new season is beginning. I'm, looking forward, I'm looking forward. Not behind. I'm, not behind. I'm, pressing I'm pressing toward the mark. Of the high calling. The high calling. Thank, you, Thank you Lord. For a great future. A great and a great hope. I receive this by faith in Jesus' name. Now take 30 seconds and give God praise for everything that he's done in 2020 and everything that we're going to accomplish for the kingdom in 2021. Come on, church. Lift your voice. Give him praise. Honor him. Thank him. Lord, I thank you for a strong finish so that we can have a strong start in 2021. Lord, I thank you that we're going to press into great things in 2021. We're going to see great increase. We're going to see new faces. We're going to see new people come through these doors. 
Lord, we're casting our net into the community. And Lord, I thank you that as we do this, by faith, you're going to bring a great harvest. We're ready to receive a harvest, Lord. We've prepared our nets. We've prepared ourselves. We love you and we, we praise you for it. We receive it by faith. In Jesus' name. Can you shout amen? amen. Give him one more praise tonight. Amen. amen. Hi, I'm Heath. And I'm Louise. And we want to thank you so much for watching this video. Faith Life Worship Center in Naples, Florida is a Bible-believing, spirit-filled, non-denominational church. If you live in Southwest Florida and you're looking for a good church with a fun and energetic contemporary worship experience, awesome children and youth ministries, and a great family atmosphere, we'd love to see you at one of our services really soon. Go to faithlifeworshipcenter.com to learn more about our church, watch other messages online, check out our store, or support our ministry financially. Please take a few seconds to like this video and subscribe to our channel. You can also find us on social media. We hope that you'll watch other messages online, but what we really want is to see you in person at Faith Life Worship Center. Hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye.